This video provides an overview of the DV2 memory model. The DV2 memory model consists of different areas as shown in the chart. In parentheses are the DBMCFG or DBCFG configuration parameters that control each memory area. For example, monitor heap at the top has the configuration parameter mon heap underscore sz. On the other hand, there are some memory areas like FCM buffers and application shared heap that do not have a configuration parameter because normally DB2 would set those up for you. Now let's start with the database manager shared memory area at the top of the figure. The database manager shared memory is the memory used by the DB2 instance. So when you issue a DB2 start, this area is used. You will get one of these areas per instance that you start. Normally, starting an instance will consume less than 100 megs. For example, let's illustrate these using the Windows Task Manager and the command line processor. From the command line processor, I issue the command db2 start, and we will see the memory changing on task, the task manager. So it's going from 1.62 gig for this area which shows a virtual memory to about 1.82 gig after we issue the db2 start. Now let's issue a db2 stop and we should see the memory going down. As you can see, it goes back to 1.62 gig. The database manager shared memory area has different heaps. The monitor heap is used when you turn on monitoring and take snapshots. How do you turn on monitoring? Well, let me show you that again here from the command line processor. If you go to the dbmcfg by issuing the command db2 get dbmcfg, and I'm going to grab since I have a Unix simulator. So I'm going to grab for the word mon in uppercase. This is going to show me all the different switches that I can turn on, and most of them are off by default. When some of these switches are turned on, you can collect different information about what's going on in your DB2 system, and this can help you resolve locking issues, performance issues, and so on. How do you see the collected information? You can use the command get snapshot as we will show in this example. So let me connect to the sample database first and then issue the command db2 get snapshot for all buffer pools because for this particular example I want to see information about my buffer pools. This is the information you can obtain with that command. As you can see, most of the fields say not collected. And the reason for that is the switch regarding or related to buffer pools was not turned on. But anyway, all of these monitor information will be stored in the monitor heap. Going back to the figure, the next area in memory is the MCM buffers and this stands for fast communication manager and these are buffers that are used for uh, connecting or communication between different partitions in db2 when you use the dpf or database partitioning feature it's also used for communication between different agents when you have intra-parallel turned on on the right side we have a different or an other another memory area which is the audit buffer and this is the area that is used when you use the db2 audit command. Now let me introduce you a very useful tool to monitor db2 memory consumption. It's called db2 memory tracker and it can be invoked with the command db2 mtrk. If I, to, if I type db2 mtrk-i and press enter is going to list me the information for my instance. In this case, it's showing me different areas in the database manager shared memory. But if you don't know exactly what these acronyms like MONH or FCMBP mean, 
you can type db2mtrk-i and then dash v for verbose and press enter and it will show you the same information but with an explanatory text. So for example, mon h would mean database monitor heap and then it provides the size that is being used in bytes or if you prefer in k, you can take a look at the previous result. If you do not know how to use the MTRK tool, simply use the dash H flag and it will give you the help information for this tool. Next, let's take a look at the database global memory. This is the memory area used for databases. Each database will have its own database global memory. So if there are five databases that are active, there will be five database global memory areas.